Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alo Kanoja, psychiatrist and co-founder of Healthy Gamer. We're on a quest to help the internet with mental health. Today, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about why we become doormats and how to stop being a doormat. So the first thing to understand is like, okay, why are we doormats? So a lot of people think that they're doormats because I'm weak, because I can't stand up for myself, because I'm insecure. And so the tricky thing, the reason why it's so hard to stop being a doormat is because we sort of misdiagnose the problem. And so if we think the reason we're a do doormat is because we're weak and then we try to build our strength up, then we think, okay, if I become stronger as a human being, then I'll no longer be a doormat. Whereas actually, um, what tends to happen is that people will, will try to focus on those solutions and they find themselves being doormats over and over and over again. And then people start to feel a little bit powerless and stuck and they're like, yeah, I don't know how to stop being a doormat. So let's try to start by understanding, okay, what is being a doormat about? So this sounds absolutely crazy, but being a doormat is about control. And it's actually the control that you exert on other people by being a doormat. And what's that mean? Like, that's wild, right? Like if we think about a, a doormat, we think, oh my God, like this person is so powerless, other people walk all over them. But let's try to understand how that works and why people, why doormats let other people walk all over them. So really what it comes down to is control. When you're a doormat, you have a choice, right? You can either stand up to someone and then that person is going to react a particular way. They may dislike you. They may challenge you. They may say mean things to you. And so if, if you stand up to someone, you're sort of surrendering control over their reaction. And if you behave like a doormat, if you don't challenge them at all, if you let them walk all over you, you know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to continue liking you. They may continue, you know, engaging in a relationship with you. A lot, of, a lot of this information about doormats comes from abusive relationships where it's kind of bizarre because actually what being a doormat is about is it's about controlling the other person, right? It's about behaving in a particular way so that the other person that you're interacting with is guaranteed to behave in another way, right? So if I'm nice to them, if I let them walk all over me, they won't say mean things to me. They'll continue inviting me over. Um... You know, they, they'll treat me not well, but I know the kind of reaction that I'm going to get from them. They won't cut me out of their life if I let them walk all over me. And so I know it sounds really, really bizarre, but being a doormat is actually about controlling another person, right? It's about behaving in a particular manner to elicit a particular response or avoid a particular response from another person. So this is the wild thing is that doormats actually have a lot of control. It's not that they lack control. It's that they behave in such a manner where they actually like control some of the reactions of people around them. And so the key to, to, to not being a doormat anymore is actually, I know this sounds bizarre, but it's not to gain more control. It's to let go of control. It's to surrender. And so the key to becoming, uh, you know, no longer a doormat and standing up for yourself is in letting other people do what they're going to do, right? I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand up for myself. And if you dislike it, that's okay. I have to be okay with surrendering control of another human being's interactions or another human being's reactions in order to stop being a doormat. I have to be willing to accept that other people are going to do things that I may not be able to control. And the moment that you surrender that control, the moment that you actually let another person react however they want to, is the moment that you stop being a doormat. And when you stand up to someone, what are you doing? You're giving that person a choice, right? You're giving that person a choice. You're saying, hey, if you don't like me because I said something that you did that was inappropriate and you no longer want to hang out with me, that's your choice. Standing up for yourself is not about taking control from other people. It's about giving control to other people. It's about surrendering. It's about saying, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And you have the choice, right? You're giving them the choice about how to react. And sometimes their reactions can be painful. Sometimes their reactions can be hurtful. And the bizarre thing is that the more of a doormat that we are, the more we're taking away their choice, right? We're making the choice for them. We're saying, yeah, I don't. We can eat whatever you want to because, you know, I want to keep you happy. Being a doormat is about keeping other people happy. How do you keep other people happy if you just even think about it? 
keeping someone happy implies that you're the one who's in control, that you have the power to say, yeah, you know, I'm going to do this thing or I'm going to let you pick and therefore you'll be happy. And so bizarrely, who's in control of that situation? It's you, right? Because you're the one who sacrifices yourself for the sake of another person. That's not a situation where you lack control. You're the one who's making the sacrifice. You're the one who has the choice to sacrifice or let them respond, right? You're actually controlling their reaction by being a doormat. It's completely wild. So the crazy thing about being a doormat, and this is why so many people get stuck in it, is because they think to themselves, oh my God, I'm so weak. Whereas the bizarre thing is that actually you're really strong. And once you realize that you're really strong, that you actually have agency over the situation, that you're the one who's in control. And when you let that control go, when you let other people choose how to react to you instead of manipulating their reaction by playing it really safe and being a doormat and not rocking the boat, that's when you start to make change. And that's what I see in abusive relationships. Right? I know this sounds really bizarre, but one of the most important things to explain to someone in an abusive relationship is that, in a sense, they're a victim, but they also have agency. That the person in an abusive relationship, I know this sounds bizarre, but it takes two to make an abusive relationship. It takes two people, right? It's not just one. You look at an abusive relationship and you think, oh, like I'm the victim and this person has all the power. And there's certainly a power dynamic there, but why does that power dynamic exist? It's because one person gives their power to the other person. And one of the best ways to overcome abusive relationships is to recognize that you're actually the one in control, that you're the one who cedes that control to them. You're the one who controls that person by not rocking the boat. You control their reactions. You manipulate their reactions. You're walking on eggshells all the time. You don't want to upset them. Right? So who's in control of whether they get upset? You are. And so the crazy thing about this is that, you know, it, it gets really tricky because a lot of times people will feel like, oh my God, if there's an abusive relationship and you say that, you know, it takes two to, to make an abusive relationship, you're blaming the victim. It's not their fault they're in an, an abusive relationship. And in a bizarre way, that's not always true, right? If you really think about how do you get someone out of a, an abusive relationship, and I'm talking about you know, patients that I've worked with as a psychiatrist, it's not in playing the victim card. It's not in saying, oh my God, you're a victim. Sure, certainly bad things have happened to you. Traumatic experiences have happened to you. And we deserve compassion. You know, we, we should be compassionate towards those people. Absolutely. But it's actually in empowering that person, right? It's in helping that person understand, hey, actually, you're the one in control here. You have power in this relationship. And the reason you give up that power is to control the other person, that you actually exert that power by controlling the other person's reaction. And the way to get out of that relationship, the way to stop being a doormat, is bizarrely not gaining more control, but giving it up. Saying to the other person, you know what, this isn't okay. And if you dislike me for it, so be it. If you want to break up with me because I'm not willing to accept your disrespect anymore, that choice is entirely yours. So the key thing about overcoming being a doormat, if you want to stand up for yourself, if you want to stop being a doormat, it's not about gaining more power. It's not about gaining more control. It's the exact opposite. It's surrender. It's let the other person choose. Put the choice up to them. You do what you, you're going to do and let the other person decide whether that, that works for them and it does or it doesn't. And that's exactly what happens in abusive relationships when people stand up to them. It doesn't work anymore, right? And then you exercise your choice. You say, okay, if you're not willing to change, then I'm gone. I'm done with this. So I know it sounds super bizarre, but if you want to stop being a doormat, stop trying to control other people. Don't try to empower yourself. Let yourself surrender to the other person's choice. Let them choose what they're going to choose, but you make your choice and you let them make theirs. Stop making their choice for them. Stop manipulating their choice by sacrificing yourself. And then you'll stop being a doormat. So listen, guys, I don't know if you guys like this kind of stuff or not, um, but you know, here at Healthy Gamer, we're trying to decide how best to serve you. 
how best to support you guys and how best to sort of help the internet with mental health. So if you guys like this video and you guys want us to do more of it, go ahead and like, subscribe, you know, follow all that good stuff. And thanks for listening. I'm Dr. K. Adios.